Welcome to the first lesson of this course, which will concentrate on some Git tips. As you know, Git is the most used version control system at the moment. On the left of the screen, I have a new terminal with an empty directory. So now we'll initialize a Git repository. It's very simple. Just do git init and dot. Okay, see what happened here. So this is just debug output. And the important part is this one. So initialize the empty git repository. So now, as you've noticed here, the prompt, the shell prompt changed. See here it was username at host and then the current directory. Now we still have username at host, but we have some information about Git. So now we'll see how to set up this, uh, this part, which is very important because it will help us uh, work with Git repositories much easily than uh, without this information. And of course, we can see like this, not the only directory we have is uh, this one, the .git directory. Okay, see here, uh, there are some examples. You can look it up in Google if you write uh, git shell prompt. So you can see several examples of uh, prompts. It will be enabled automatically when you go to a git uh, directory, directory the git repository in it. See this one, for example, shows you the current directory and the current branch. Also some of the information depending on the color and other uh, characters. There are lots of different ones. So the output you see here comes from uh, uh, this script, okay, which you can find on archive.org, but there are also mirrors on GitHub anyway. So you just need to copy this. Uh, if you want to use uh, the one I use, you just need to copy it in your bash RC file and then uh, re reload the, the bash configuration. So as you see here, Here's where I copied it. So you can copy it at the end of uh, the bash rc file. Before that, you need to import uh, another script. Here I imported it uh, as .git prompt.sh, which is this script here. You can find it in the git repository itself, in the source uh, of the git repository. Anyway, so this, uh, I'll leave the link in the video description so you can enable it in your developing a machine if you want. And okay, so this is another repository, the one that we'll use as our complete example, which is mdtalk. And see, there are already lots of files in it. And let's see the status, see, because now it's red, this means we are on the dev branch. We have some unstaged changes and our remote is in sync with our local repository. And yeah, so you can confirm this when you do git status and you'll have your uh, data, okay, your, your change files or the thing that you need to commit, you have them here. But yeah, so this is just a shorthand version of what you get from, uh, from the status and from other tools, from other git tools. It's very useful because you don't have to do git status a lot of times and uh, it will save you time. And as I said before, there are lots of different scripts you can use for this output. And the one I use is not the most beautiful one, but it works for me. I've used it for many years. So once you have your configuration, you just enable it. So source and then, okay, like this. It means uh, we are sourcing the bash C file. And so we enable the git prompt configuration. And now we'll see the Git remotes. For this simple repository, we set up two remotes and we'll see why it is important to have more than one remote. Because most people uh, put the repository on GitHub, uh, only on GitHub, but it might be a dangerous thing to do. And I'll tell you why later. Okay, see here this new browser window. So this is the Git profile for Firefox because I use different profiles for each job. So this one is specific for Git. So if you don't know Git, it's just a, a web interface for Git repositories, similar to GitHub, GitHub. This one is free and open source. You can install it on your computer as it is. Uh, this will be one of our remotes where we'll put our repository. 
Okay, so now our repository is named CS dash zero. So we can do it like that and set it as public. Okay, here there is the description. So okay, we'll leave the all the rest as default values for the moment. Okay. So here you can see that there is a, an empty repository. He's giving me the SSH URL to be used from Git. We can push and pull our changes from uh, the repository. And now we'll add this remote. So, so what you do is just to copy this uh, the string. Okay, let's see if we do git remote minus v, it's empty. So it's git remote add name. So usually the default one is origin and then the URL. Okay, minus v, okay. So here, now we have still the entry repository. Read me, we can create a new file. Sorry. See, what, see that's the change here, the output, it became red and uh, it says on tracked. Okay, now we can add the readme. I git commit. Now for the moment, first me like this. Okay, as you see here, I did the git push and uh, see how the writing changed. Now it says master and equal. Equal means that our local git repository is in sync with the remote. And see, now we have the readme, uh, just like we have in our local repository, even on the remote, uh, the same readme. Another website you can use instead of GitHub is Codeberg. Okay, which is a uh, code on codeberg.org. Codeberg uses a uh, a modified version of uh, Gitty, which is Forjo. It's very similar to Gitty. Anyway, so you just create a new repository. We have the same text inputs. And yeah, I forgot to mention that Codeberg is a non-profit uh, organization. So you can just do your, so SCS zero. So we have the same as our other remote. See here, we are presented with the same outputs, it's very similar outputs. So you just copy this one. Okay, so we have the previous remote. Now git remote add. So we can call it Codeberg. See, now we have two remotes, Codeberg and Origin. Origin will be our default one. And it push. Okay, see, after the update, we have the readme file. If we do, for example, a change here, only on Codeberg, remotely. Okay, if we edit the readme here, only on Codeberg, like this, codeberg.org, and we commit it. Okay, see, now we have it. Now we go back to our local repository. Let's see, status. Then you do it like this. So if you know somebody has committed from a specific remote, just do so git pull and the name of the remote. This one, so Kohlberg. So the correct command is this one. Git pull Kohlberg master, like this. See now it says that readme has been updated. And okay, I see we have chains made from Codeberg. Okay, and in our uh, local, in our Gitty instance, see we still have the old uh, data. So now to put it in sync, you just do git push, git push because it's the default uh, remote. And see here we have our change. So essentially the reason you do you use uh, multiple remotes is for let's say back, backup mirroring and to avoid censorship. It doesn't take long to set up. Uh, it just slows you down a little bit with uh, while you do your push and pulls, but you have lots of advantages. Let's say resilience advantages. Here's what happened to YouTube DL on GitHub, which uh, was deleted uh, from GitHub several years ago. 
and it was reinstated sometime later. And see here the reason why they took down that project, which is a very popular project, in fact. Let's see, it's this one. So we probably even used it. And so in practice, it was uh, banned from GitHub for some time. So that's why I was telling you about uh, uh, putting your projects on multiple remotes. Uh, this is one of the possible reasons. And yeah, of course, uh, all this works as long as you set up your SSH keys. See here, for example, this is my SSH config file. See here, I have uh, all of my entries. So usually for most repository, I only use uh, Codeberg, Fra Framagit. This is another free service similar to Codeberg. Then there is my instance here. I have some repository on GitHub. I don't use GitLab anymore, but maybe you can use it. And this, uh, these other hosts are for other reasons. This is for Arch Linux packages. This one is uh, to deploy my documentation. This one is to build Arch Linux packages locally in another machine. So when I push my package build file, it gets built automatically. This is my local Gitting instance, so it's this one here. So yeah, when you do git push, see it matches the host, so git push software blah, blah, user gitty. It reads the SSH key from this file. And it does the the push or the pull depending on the operation you're doing with the git. GitHub uh, doesn't accept doing uh, HTTP push. It says that GitHub is no longer accepting account password with aut authenticating Git operations, but it says to use an access token. Anyway, the easiest thing for me was to use the SSH protocol because I was already using it before, so nothing changed for me. And all you have to do, okay, so let's say you have uh, uh, rebooted your machine for some reason. So all you have to do let me do like this the first time. So you're not prompted with the password every time. You're only prompted once. SSH out on the path of the key, the SSH key. Okay, see here. This means that I added the code verb SSH key to the SSH key ring, as it is explained here on the SSH add manual. It's add, it means adds private key identities to the open SSH authentication agent. So using a SSH add will save you lots of time because you will not be prompted for the password of your SSH key every time, every time you push, for example, or you pull from a private repository. It might happen as well. And so this one, uh, you need to learn it. I think we're done for this uh, first video. We learned how to set up the a git prompt and why what it is and why it is important we learned the git remotes so why it is important to have more than one remote and yeah of course uh, uh, one of them can also be a github if you want to use it see for example this is for the md top project i have all these remotes one of them is github as well this one is like a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, Git, just in an experimental program, but uh, some people are using it, and I use it just for some projects. Yeah, so we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Rem I have seven remotes for the MD Top project. So this will be like um, another mirror. So this is a a mirror. This is a mirror. This is a mirror. This is the main repository of my Gitty instance. This is to build uh, Arch Linux packages. This is to deploy the documentation. So we've seen how to do this, how to stop these remotes. And finally, we also saw, we also saw some SSH configuration. That's it for this first lesson. Uh, see you on the next lesson. Bye bye.